person, place, or thing, how should we think about God? Hmm? This is a good question from Andrew. About, uh, YouTube theologians, good to see you. Pastor Wolfmuller here. And you podcast theologians. We got we to gotta get a better nickname for you podcast listeners. Here's what Andrew says. Christ is risen indeed. For a couple of years now, I've been basking in the Psalms. They're a treasure trove of comfort, history, and revelation about God and our Savior Jesus. One of the pictures in the Psalms uh, that is a recurrent theme is God as our dwelling place. Not just God as a person, but as a place. That's really insightful, really keen insight. It's wonderful. A refuge, a fortress, a hiding place, an abode, a dwelling place, a safe place space. I'm currently working through Psalm 90. That's the oldest of the Psalms, by the way, the Psalm of Moses. The only Psalm that Moses wrote, as far as we know, at least the only one that we have. The first thing I do, I got this from listening to Dr. Kleinig's lecture before listening to your shorter Psalm videos, is try to get a sense of the word pictures in the Psalms that are present. Moses opens Psalm 90 by saying how God is our dwelling place in all generations. I wonder, what does this dwelling place look like? I have my thoughts and resources to assist, but I would love for you to talk about this picture of God in one of your videos. How God is a place for us to dwell, hide, take refuge, receive rest. Where is this place? How do we access it? When? Why? What does it look like? Thanks for reading and the work you do and you share with the church at large. May God be your dwelling place and safe abode in all times. Andrew. Andrew, thank you so much for the note. God be praised. It's really wonderful. And this idea of looking at the Psalms and, and asking these questions, what's the picture? That's the main and first question. What's the picture that this is giving? Who's talking to whom? Uh, what's the structure and everything? But if we can get a hold of the pictures of the Psalms. One of the things that we're talking about a lot around here, doing YouTube theology, is that the Lord is to be understood not as a... Uh, machine or an algorithm or something like that, but that when we're dealing with God, we're dealing with a person, in fact, three persons, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, and we're um, speaking with God as to a person, that the Lord is doing everything different. In fact, y yesterday we were talking about the miracle of Jesus healing the man who was deaf and had a speech impediment, and he he looks up to heaven and he spits on the ground and he touches his ears and his tongue. And why is the Lord doing these things? Well, Jesus is not a, he's not like a miracle vending machine. He, he does things differently. Each time he does a miracle, he does it different because he's a person. But the Bible will also talk about God as a thing. Normally the thing is like a rock or a piece of military equipment. The Lord is my shield, my buckler, so forth. Or a place. And that place is a place of safety. I think most of the pictures from the Psalms are taken either from the agricultural field or from the battlefield or from Mount Zion in the temple. And those three sort of realms of activity are where the images of God come from. So especially the battlefield images have this picture as the Lord being our fortress. Psalm 90, uh, in fact, I want to look at Psalm 27 in a little bit. Where did the... Bible, this is the one I want here. Uh, Psalm 27, but Psalm 90, to just to get a couple of verses uh, from Psalm 90, um, because Psalm 27 plays with this idea really beautifully. Lord, but here's Psalm 90, verse 1. Lord, you have been our dwelling place in all generations. Before the mountains were brought forth, or even you had formed the earth and the world, from everlasting to everlasting, you are God. So that we are mm, safe secure, protected, as we dwell with the Lord. Now, it's Psalm 27. That, I mean, a lot of Psalm 46, uh, I flip to here, that's what Luther writes, a mighty fortress is our God. God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. That's a beautiful picture. But Psalm 27 mixes up the idea that the Lord is our um, castle and that the Lord is, he protects us in his temple. Uh, it, it takes those two metaphors, those two pictures of where we dwell with the Lord and, and again, mixes them up. It says, uh, well, the, maybe I'll start with verse 3. Though an army should encamp against me, my heart shall not fear. Though war should rise against me, I will not be afraid. 
In this will I be confident. Sorry, mixing it up here. In this will I be confident. One thing I have desired of the Lord, that will I seek, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, to behold the beauty of the Lord and to inquire in his temple. For in the time of trouble, he shall hide me in his pavilion. In the secret place of his tabernacle, he shall hide me. He shall set me high upon a rock. Now, it's an amazing picture that the Lord says that we're going to be safe in his tent. Now, the tent is probably, whoa, the tent is probably the last place you would go if you wanted to be safe. I remember Carrie, my wife, telling the story of going camping and there was a bear outside the tent and it was scratching on the edge, scratching, scratching, scratching. And they were all huddled in the middle of the tent, worried that this bear might might scrape through and the bear sniffed around all the corners. And they, they knew that that they were in they were doomed because the because the cloth couldn't stop the bear from getting through. Well the bear was finally left actually and they went out to kind of look and see what destruction was done. And as they looked around the edge of the tent, they saw the footprints of the raccoon. <laughs> you know, but this is, I mean, a tent probably can't even protect you from a raccoon. This is why when, whenever we went, uh, started to take our family camping, Carrie never wanted to be in a tent, but a camper so that you could, you know, you have some protection. But here the, David says, the, Lord, I want you to protect me in your tent. Hide me, it says, in your tent. And then it switch, switches to the fortress and it says, set me high upon a rock. Well, what is it? Am I hidden in the tent or am I exalted on the rock? And the answer is yes. That's all the picture of what it means to be hidden in the Lord. He wraps us in his mercy. He encloses us in his kindness. He covers us with his righteousness. And by that, he keeps us from the evil one. He, he puts us in the armor of light. So that, so that we dwell in the tent of the Lord, the tabernacle of the Lord, the, the castle of the Lord, the, the city of the Lord. We, we are dwelling with God and, and dwelling with Him, we are safe and protected. Now, how do we go to that place? It's not like if I go to Jerusalem, I'm safe, and if I leave Jerusalem, I'm not. It's not like there's, uh, 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 I, I can put in the, the, the city of God on Google Maps and I can figure out how long it'll take to get there. But how do we go to that place? Well, the Psalms bring us there. We, the, the Word of God brings us there so that by faith we, we know what our eyes cannot see, that the Lord surrounds us and protects us and keeps us. And that settles us too. I mean, in the midst of all the tumult and chaos of this world, that, that settles us. God be praised. Well, thanks for the email, and thanks so much for the question, and thanks for reading the Psalms. It's great insight. And may the Lord uh, grant to you, too, that also, as you read and pray the Psalms, that it would bring you uh, that comfort and that peace, especially the Psalm 27. That's beautiful. All right, if you've got questions, uh, wolfmuller.co slash contact. You can sign up for the Wednesday Whatnot also there on the email. We'll talk to you soon. God's peace be with you.